my students, I'm going to talk about IS LM model. We're going to learn what is IS and what is LM model. You'd be wondering what is IS. So why, what is IS? IS stands for investment savings and LM stands for liquidity preference money supply. This is a Keynesian macroeconomic model that shows how the market for economic goods, that is IS, interacts with the loanable funds market, LM, or money market. It is represented as a graph in which the IS and LM curve intersect to show the short-term equilibrium between interest rate and output. So here, IS stands for the investment and saving, the relationship between that, and the LM stands for the money supply. So the liquidity preference, money supply. So this is what is what LM stands for. Otherwise, you can call it as loanable funds market, or it is otherwise called as money market. Always remember, we have two market. One is the goods market. Goods market tells about, explains about the IS model, and LM is the money market. It, ex it tells about the demand and supply of money transaction, whereas IS talks about the demand and supply of goods. Coming to the next slide, this is a key, just a key takeaways, that is ISLM model describes how aggregate market for real goods and financial market, I already told you, one is the aggregate market for real goods, that is IS, and financial market is a LM, interacts to balance the rate of interest and total output in the macro. So the, on, on the whole, the ISLM model tells you about the interactions between the goods market and the financial market how it can be altered, how it can be brought into equilibrium so that you can balance the rate of interest and total output in the macroeconomics. Very, very important is the rate of interest because the RBI gives you the rate of interest. In the, in the, uh, uh, to come out, to talk about the uh, fiscal or monetary policy, monetary policy, the RBA takes care of it. The Reserve Bank of India takes care of it and it gives you the rate of interest. So it tells you about the the um, CRR cash reserve ratio, liquidity uh, ratio, the bank rates, so everything done by the, the monetary policy. So that is what we are going to talk, we are going to study in the macroeconomics. So macroeconomics, it talks about, it gives you a very brief idea about how we can alter this ISLM model in order to balance the rate of interest and the total output. Total output talks, tells you about the GDP of our economy, how our country is get, reaching the GDP, what is the current GDP, how we can improve our growth rate. Right now we have the uh, COVID-19 issues and the GDP has gone down from 8% to 3%. And if the economy is still going to go with lockdown, we're going to fall down uh, further more and the output will fall down. So macroeconomic will fall down. So only the monetary policy, that is the LM, the, the loanable market or the money market can alter this particular problem situation. So that is the reason why I have taken this particular topic for you today. Coming to the second thing, ISLM was devised for, as a formal graphic representation of Keynesian economic theory. So this was actually uh, framed to give a graphic representation of the Keynesian economics. So Keynes is the person who had come, is a modern economist who, had, who came during the year of uh, 1930s after the World Great Depression where we had a lot of chaos and confusion quite after the World War and the whole economy fell down. We had very great depression and he was the one who gave us life to get out of that particular or we were able to recover from that situation. Similarly, even now we are looking into what kind of solutions can be done to recover the, uh, the situation from COVID-19 because it's a bio war. It is nothing of trade war, but it is a bio war where which is, uh, which is a concern about the human lives. So we need to work on it very seriously. At the same time, we have to look after the macroeconomic. Coming to the next point, ISLM can be used to describe how changes in money, market preferences, alter the equilibrium level of GDP and market interest rates, but the model lacks the precision and realism to be usefully pres a prescription to be, to be a useful prescription tool for economic policy. But we don't know. We have a model for it. But how far it is going to practically applicable, we need to find it out. Coming to the next slide, hope you are able to understand the real fact of what is IS and LM. If you are clear with it, I can proceed to the next slide. This is the next point we are getting, entering, entering into how we are going to learn about the IS LM model, how we are going to understand the model in depth. British economist John Hicks was the first who introduced the ISLM model in 1937. I told you uh, in 1930s we had very, very great, uh, great depression 
happening all over the world and it affected the economy worldwide. So that is the reason why many economists like John Hicks, as I mentioned before, the next, next person just I want to tell you is, just one year after fellow British economist John Maynard Keynes published the general theory of employment, interest and money. Hicks' model served as a formalized graphical representation of Keynesian theory, though it was used mainly as a heuristic device today. The three, there are three critical exogenous. You should understand there are three critical exogenous. The external variables. What are the external variables in the IS model? ISL model, uh, that is the number one is liquidity. The second one is the investment. And the third one is the consumption. I told you liquidity stands for the money. Investment is the business that is trade going on. So how goods have been produced. At the same time, we need to have consumption. Consumption is something we are consuming. So we need to have money. We need to have business, that is to buy the product, and we also need to consume the product. So these are three external variables which is not in our hand. It is in the business people, it is in the hands of the customers, consumers, we all, and also the money market, liquidity, money supply. According to the theory, liquidity is determined by the size of the velocity of the money supply. The levels of investing and consumption are determined by the marginal decisions of the individual actors. So who or want can decide it. So our consumption, see we uh, consume, when we have more income, we consume a lot. Now we are, though we have income, we are not forced to go out for any of the hotels to consume anything. For example, if I really want to go and sit in a hotel and have pizza or burger, I'm, I'm finding it difficult because Corona or COVID-19 tells you that you have to be very careful about your food and not to have foods from outside, especially certain foods are not really good for your health, so which we are restricting. So this is the thing. This happens when during this time we, we try to, con the consumption level of us reduces. And even now the pathetic scene is many are not having employment opportunities, no income generation. So poor thing is from hand to mouth itself is very difficult. So they are only looking for the basic necessities, that is whatever it is available in the um, in the in the for which can be affordable for them, which is available for them at a free of cost, they are able to take it. Then ISLM graph examines the relationship between output, that is the GDP of a country, and the interest rate. So where always remember, I am giving you just the gist of all the things. This particular ISLM curve finally ends with how we are going to bring equilibrium between the output, that is the GDP of our economy, and the interest rate. So these are the two things which you should be very clear about. The entire economy is boiled down to just two markets, output and money, as I told you. And their respective supply and demand characteristics push the economy towards them. So uh, it was an equilibrium point. Always in economics, we talk about equilibrium point. Everything, demand and supply into equilibrium. Demand for money, supply of money into equilibrium. Demand for goods, supply of goods into equilibrium. So only when we have the income and expenditure equilibrium, only when all these things are coming to equilibrium, we can come to a solution that we are in a safer position. Okay, hope you all could un understood clearly what is ISLM model. Now coming to the next slide, what is the characteristics of, basic characteristics of ISLM graph? I'm going to give you the graph uh, after some time. The ISLM graph consists of two curves. That is, one is IS curve, another is the LM curve. The gross domestic product, that is the GDP, which we call it as Y. So in the graph I'll be mentioning about Y, is placed on the horizontal axis, increasing to the right. The interest rate or I, small i refers to interest rate or sometimes some uh, books they will refer at R. So I put I or R makes up the, vela, the vertical axis. So vertical like this, horizontal on the flatter surface. The IS curve depicts the set of all levels of interest rate. So it will give you the all levels of interest rate. What is the output, GDP? At which uh, total investment, I equals total saving, yes. So this, you have to be very clear. The IS curve explains the, it depicts the set of all levels of interest rate and output, that is the GDP, at which total investment I equals to total savings. At lower the IS curve slopes downwards and to the right. The LM curve depicts the set of all levels of income. It also depicts all level of income and interest rate at which money supply equals money demanded. The LM curve slopes upward because higher levels of income induces 
interest rate to keep money in supply and liquidity demand in equilibrium. So always remember the IS curve slopes downward because in investment as the interest rate is low there will be greater investment whereas here if the investment is higher then the demand and money for uh, supply for uh, the, to hold money supply will also increase therefore IS curve slopes downward and LM curve slopes upward. The intersection of the IS LM curve shows the equilibrium point of interest rate and output when money market and the real economy are in balance. So multiple scenarios or points can be, can be, we can also add in time. For example, during 1930s we had Great Depression, what happened? In 1990s we had uh, the uh, new economic policy coming in liberalization, globalization, so what happened? So the, the demand curve will increase. Similarly, in 2000, any other thing have been improved, the economy has improved. We had the uh, trade war between China, your America, China, India, and America. So all these things are different. And now, the COVID-19 is a big issue all over the world. So how the whole economy is affected? So we'll have different versions, we'll have different points on time, maybe represented by adding additional ISLM curve in some versions of the uh, versions of the graph curves displays limited convexity or concavity shifts in the position and shape of the islm curve representing changing preferences for liquidity management and consumption these are things that alter the equilibrium level of income and interest so always remember so we are looking into the changing preferences of liquidity investment consumption how this is going to bring equilibrium of level of income and interest. So income and interest have to come to an equilibrium. Now coming to the, so this is what is the goods market and money market links. One second, I'll just show you the picture of it. Okay. Yeah, this is the ISLM model. I told you in the x-axis you have the national income, that is Y, the GDP, and in the y-axis you have the rate of interest. So IS curve slopes downward and LM curve slopes upward. So it's a small e diagram for those explanation. So coming back to the model. Okay. Goods market and money market. The last slide I'm coming into it. Goods market and money market links between them. That is the Keynes in his analysis of national income explains that National income is determined at the level where aggregate demand is equal. That is aggregate demand in the sense aggregate expenditure. So how much of people are expanding on consuming. So aggregate expenditure for consumption and investment goods. That is C plus I. C stands for consumption investment. That is we are investing for consum consumption. And I stands for investment. So investment goods equals aggregate output. So aggregate expenditure is equal to aggregate output. So here this is what is the explanation where the uh, Keynesian theory explains about the national income. In other words, in Keynes simple model, the level of national income is shown to be determined by the goods market equilibrium. In the sim in this simple analysis of equilibrium, in the goods market, Keynes considers investment to be determined by the rate of interest. So investment, always remember, investment is determined by the rate of interest. Suppose you want to do a business. Suppose you want to go and get a loan from the bank. So what do you will ask for? The which bank has got lesser rate of interest? Where I can go and get a uh, borrow money or I can go for a loan to start my own business. So we will go for a lesser in interest rate. So that is what I'm, over here I'm telling. So investment will always have, when there is a rate of, in, when there is a lesser rate of interest, the investment will increase. So here, uh, with the marginal efficiency of capital and is shown to be independent of the level of national income. So here, always remember, the uh, Keynesian model tells you that investment to be determined by the rate of interest along with the marginal efficiency of capital. What is marginal efficiency of capital? So how efficient, suppose I'm putting it, uh, putting, I'm having a capital, how efficiently, how, uh, how uh, well I'm able to get a profit? the marginal efficiency from that capital, how much of profit I'm able to get from it, how efficient the capital is giving me an income, the revenue, and is shown to be independent, it is very independent of the level of national income. The rate of interest, according to the Keynes, is determined by money market equilibrium, by the demand 
for and the supply of money. In this, Keynes model changes in the rate of interest either due to change in the money supply or change in the demand for money will affect the determination of national income. I told you before itself, anything that affects the goods market or money market will really uh, will affect the determination of national income and output in the goods market through cost, though uh, through causing changes in the level of investment. In this way, changes in the money market equilibrium influenced by determination of national income and output in the in the goods market. However, there is an apparently one flaw in the Keynesian analysis which has to be pointed out by some economists and has been a subject of good deal of controversies. It has been asserted that in the Keynesian model, whereas the changes in the rate of interest in the money market affect investment and therefore the level of income and output in the goods market, there is seemingly no in inverse influence of changes in the goods market, that is investment in income on the money market equilibrium. So this is a real, uh, I've given you a gist about what is ISL model, how the goods market links with the money market. Hope you all had understood today's lesson. Thank you.